It's done. It's done. You won. Yep, it wasn't about Kavanaugh at all. It wasn't about the court. It was about you, the system that protects you, something called due process. But first, congrats to you, Democrats. This is what happens when you decide to burn the village in order to save it. And because of this is what happens when you decide to burn the village in order to save it. And because of that, Republicans finally found their stones. After so much lunacy that we were forced to stomach by a media who would swallow anything, like the New York Times report that Kavanaugh once threw an ice cube. I guess the gang rape thing didn't work, so that was your backup? <laughs> what, you couldn't find anyone to blame him for a wet willy? <laughs> And there was the third accuser's claims imploding all over the place, much like Michael Avenetti's pro aspirations. <laughs> he did more to harm the Democratic Party than Bill Clinton's cigar. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, the media ignored holes in the accuser's story so large you could steer Michael Moore through them. <laughs> And so after the FBI investigation found zilch, the swing votes went to Kavanaugh, led by Susan Collins, a Republican who went to the Senate floor and methodically explained why she thought Kavanaugh was fit for the bench. She, sm she smoothly dismantled the anti-Kavanaugh arguments and painted him a moderate, all to convince the libs that Kavanaugh wasn't a monster, but more like a smurf. Were they listening? Were they listening? No, the left mocked her because they prefer their women to think only one way, this way. So, uh, this is a great day. Kavanaugh and Trump may well have saved the country by defeating the mob. And we are all vulnerable to the mob. The mob is defined by these things. Subversion of justice, punishment without evidence, a willingness to discard individual rights and protections for immediate political gain. A mob is defined not by diverse voices, but by people imitating one sound, the sound of rage. And that's why it's so scary. The mob is an unbending beast in which intimidation is its only commodity. Which is why it's not about Kavanaugh at all. It's about you. It's about your kids, your siblings, parents, spouses. Because the mob can happen to your siblings, parents, spouses. Because the mob can happen to you. Which is why this next election is huge. We must teach the mob a lesson. But if you don't want to listen to me, then just listen to this guy. We need to teach the Democratic Party a lesson that they will never forget, that you don't F with our system, you don't F with our due process, and you don't lynch somebody based on some scurrilous accusation. No. <laughs> I love tossing to myself. Look, we're not savages with torches and pitchforks anymore. We're civilized. But everything awful in this world had to start somewhere first. The election is when you try to stop it before it gets any worse. He's a comedian, a radio host, and your Uber driver. Fox <laughs> News host Tom Shalhoub. She's so bright, glowworms follow her home. National Review reporter Kat Tim. And he can literally reach across the aisle. Former WWE superstar and my massive son. I actually really didn't care about this whole process, the, the Supreme Court nomination. It was something that I felt was out of my, uh, out of my power. It just happens. I didn't care about this story until the left made me care about it. It got me mad. The intimidation and the lies. It, it, I think that's what happened here. I think we saw a process get subverted. The process was 100% ignored. That was the whole point. And you know, I've seen as an attorney firsthand what happens when the court accepts as true allegations or statements that are uncorroborated. I've been a character witness for two 
separate false accusation trials. And mm -hmm. I saw that the ripple effect can't be overstated. And of course I support the Me Too movement professionally and personally, obviously. But one does not equate the other. And it's a ridiculous subversion of justice, too, to accept those allegations. To me, that, that, that gender e subversion of justice, too, to accept those allegations. To me, that, that, that gender equaling automatically a truth it does no one any good whatsoever mm -hmm. you know uh, Tom uh, you don't have to agree with uh, Kavanaugh's philosophies I don't think the vote was about that anymore the vote was a, a defense of a system a d defense of due process and uh, I like what you said about the mob I was almost tearing up Greg really <laughs> it might be allergies I have been emotional all week and you knew you probably mentioned this I don't know Greg but uh, our great hero Andrew Breitbart right he always spoke about what drove him to become political. It was the Clarence Thomas hearings. You right. He would always say that. And the anger he felt with a man being, uh, you know, that with Dupross being thrown out in that case, and being, uh, you know, that with Dupross being thrown out in that case, he, he became the right-wing activist that we all <laughs> know and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people in this country, are. it's going to be the same thing. I, I feel like there's a lot of people out there, people calling on my radio show, a lot of women, Greg. A lot of women. A lot of women calling my show saying, I do not like what's happening mm -hmm. here. I have, I have brothers, I have husbands, I have sons, you know, so, or yeah. husband. But most of those calls are wrong numbers. <laughs> yeah, they are husbands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of people... <laughs> A lot of people call it into your radio show because the number is really close to like a fast food restaurant in their neighborhood. <laughs> but they all call in. They all call in. Kat, I think the, the lesson for me, and you can agree or disagree, or I'd prefer you to agree, it's about a tyranny of the loud and the few who seek to intimidate the American public. That's the ultimate goal. That's how I feel. How do you feel? I think that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> That could be a thing. Yeah. Look, I think this was really tough. I was watching this and just thinking tough. I was watching this and just thinking to myself, I am so glad that I'm not a senator. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I had the hardest time today deciding whether I wanted chicken or beef on my BBQ bowl. Mm -hmm. And that is slightly less consequential than deciding who should sit on the highest court in the land. Right, right. But I, as you alluded to earlier, I think we have one person to really thank for this, and that is Michael Avenatti. Yes, you're right. <laughs> because when he brought up all of those incredible, insane mm -hmm. gang rape allegations stories. It made people kind of tune out. Yeah. Watching Dr. Ford's testimony, that was an emotional thing for me. That was, I watched that and I had a tough time deciding who to believe. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people, once they brought out the gang rape stuff, kind of stopped listening to all of it and where they were more willing to believe Brett Kavanaugh's denial. So I don't know if the White House has sent him like a thank you card <laughs> or like or like an edible arrangement. Yes, no, you, you know, Avenetti engine, uh, uh, excited more Republicans than Fox News. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would agree with that. I thought that was funnier in my head. <laughs> Tyrus, you don't have, no pity applause, no pity applause here. Tyrus, um, it's amazing how this travesty looks now when you look out, like two weeks ago, when you're inside of it, it, it seems so horrible and ugly, and now when you step out of it, it seems like, did that really happen? It's weird. I, I did my best not to get in it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not, when it comes to judges and stuff, I tend to just not want to. It's weird. I, I did my best not to get in it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not, when it comes to judges and stuff, I tend to just not want to be around it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't have great experiences with judges in general, so I try to avoid him like the plague. But to go back, um, Avenatti, I know we're laughing about it, but he concerns me because he was using fear mm -hmm. and just crazy allegory to try to ruin someone's life and move himself ahead. And I think when you there has to be some type of legal presence yes. for some for somebody to come out and do what he did, mm -hmm. attempted to do what he did, and then he can just regroup and do it again. No, it, that's the thing. It scares me because the like a, the American Bar Association is talking about how concerned they are over Kavanaugh. And Avenetti, they haven't said anything. The guy should be disbarred. I mean, he's he using people to advance himself. Like, even yeah. Stormy Daniels, like, uh, listen, she, she's had a rough life. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't think if you look, when history looks back at this, he if you look, when history looks back at this, he ever served her well. No. She ended up Sherry's having to pay. Berries. She had to pay the money the back. The White House should send him some Sherry's berries. <laughs>
No, it's terrible. It's, yeah, it's she's a- going to have to pay the money back. No one's going to want to buy her story, and he's going to hit her with a fat bill. Yeah. Like, it's literally, he does not help anyone. He's act- Maybe he's a secret agent for the Republican Party. Yeah. Maybe we should look at that. No, he, he did more help for the Republicans than um, supply-side economics. A strong argument can be made that he violated a ton of ethics yeah. laws. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and he won't go away. Coming up, what was the best part about the president's rally in Kansas? Trick question, the whole thing was awesome. Stay tuned. Most people- Trump held a rally tonight. Wonder if he thought today was a big day? This is such a big day. This is such a big day. Brett Kavanaugh is a man of great character and intellect. He's a totally brilliant scholar. Mm, totally brilliant scholar. Not just brilliant, but totally. But enough victory lapping. Trump is brilliant, but totally. But enough victory lapping. Trump's got a midterm to get through, and he laid out the choices. If you allowed the wrong people to get into office, things could change. They could change, and they could change fast. You don't hand matches to an arsonist, and you don't give power to an angry left-wing mob. (laughs) He's not done. Wait, he's not done. He's got more. The Democrats want to significantly raise your taxes. Essentially, they want to impose socialism, Venezuela, dismantle law enforcement, and eliminate our borders. They want to have nice, open borders. The Democrats have become the party of crime. They have become the party of crime. Think of it. Republicans are the party of law and order and justice. Party of crime. He just gave the Republicans their talking points. And then, of course, came the nicknames. The licking Diane Feinstein. Sleepy Joe Biden. Go like this. He's down. Donang Dick. He's a Donang Dick. I've got more Indian blood in me than Pocahontas, and I have not. And then I'm pretty sure he did something no other American president has done in history. He thanked a guy named Wink. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Michael. Wink Hartman. Thank you. So the economy's strong. His Supreme Court nominee got voted in. Pompeo's going to talk to North Korea some more. Everything's getting done. And yet I can't help but wonder about the Space Force and if that's where it's at. Space Force. That's where it's at. Doesn't sound right, but it's right. That's where it's at. (laughs) Tom, um... Trump takes a lot of victory laps, let's face it. Yeah. You know, if the sun comes up, victory lap. But I think he deserves one today, no? Oh, absolutely. And they, they are having a lot of fun. At, look, contrast the people at the Trump rallies with the resistance people who are yeah. out on the mall in Washington <laughs> screaming. They're screaming at elevators, Greg. Yes. I, I don't like elevators when the people are not screaming at them. I know. But it worked. Yeah, it worked. That's why this week was so good, because ho- hopefully this stuff won't work. They're not stopping with the screaming. There, there's people, uh, left-wing activists, real there's people, uh, left-wing activists, real people, like, you know, with the blue check on their name yeah. on Twitter. They're telling people to harass Susan Collins for the rest of her life. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. We're going to talk about that in the next segment. Oh, A little, te- a little tease I'm there, getting Tom. ahead of myself. I, I got know. so excited. I know. Cat, <laughs> uh, he's got a lot of new nicknames. Danang Dick, Leak- Leaking Diane, which sounds so... <laughs> Sounds a bit unfortunate. Uh, trying to come up with a nickname for you, Kat. How about... Uh, Not going to like it. <laughs> Unhappy Cat. Sad Cat. All right. Well, you know what, Greg? What? I've been doing a lot of thinking. Okay. And I think I figured out why Trump holds all these rallies. Why? So most people when they accomplish something Mm -hmm. or they have something to celebrate, what do they do? They 
they go have a drink. Right, right. Trump does not drink. Mm -hmm. So instead, he just fills venues full of people who love him. Yes. And allow them to clap and cheer while he talks about it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I... And that creates, that creates the same feeling it must, as it, being drunk. It must. He's drunk on love. Yes, he's drunk on and love. I like drinking, but if I could trade, yes. I'd love giant venue full of cat fans. Uh, yes. <laughs> there you go. So, Tyrus, the reason why there's a vic the Kavanaugh victory, a lot of people are saying it's because Trump refused him, and it's because he all he does is fight. He likes to fight, and he gave the Republicans the energy to fight. That's why I think you can't, like, he doesn't stop. So it's like he, he, he does his victory lap, and then, but then he starts going after everybody else because he won't quit. Yeah, and here's the, here's the buzz kill on this, y'all. <laughs> I think he has every right to be happy. Yeah. Uh, I think Kavanaugh always should have. Mm -hmm. been voted it was never in I and mean, we had to weather the the allegations and all that stuff but after the fbi mm -hmm. it was pretty clear there was no corroborated evidence so you, he there was no reason for him not yeah to be um put in but i'm all for like when it was pretty clear there was no corroborated evidence so you, he there was no reason for him not yeah to be um put in but I'm all for like winning a football game, winning a wrestling match. There's that moment you celebrate with the crowd. Then you go in the back and then you go about the rest of your day. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. President, when you do celebrate and you go all in, pointing out the losers by name, <laughs> you are writing checks that we have to catch. <laughs> he goes back to the White House with his security team. Yeah. And enjoys himself. Yeah. Has a, a Coke and a smile and calls it a day. <laughs> we have to go out to the bars and... and and then go back into society and write, and if we're wearing a red hat or we're doing whatever, we have to cast a check that he just wrote with the other people. Like, I so I, for me, I wish, I'm all for the victory lap, but the trash talking, it's getting to the point where it's causing issues for the people who support him so and stand you, by him the most. What you're saying is like a, a guy in a, in a red hat tonight is so stand what you, by him the most. What you're saying is like a, a guy in a, in a red hat tonight is more likely to get, get beat punched up. at a McGregor fight yeah. than because of the stuff. They'll use the excuse yeah. of what the president said at the rally. I just. But Tyrus, you're less likely to get hurt than I am. <laughs> okay, but when I go to. That's, yeah, that's all fun and great and clap, but when that dumbass comes to me and I put him through a wall, I got to go to court. <laughs> You're going to get but, sympathy flowers and probably a great GoFundMe to get better. <laughs> I'm probably going to be in county for two weeks waiting to get out on bail that Greg's late on the check. <laughs> but Emily would defend you, and she's quite the litigator. She's expensive. <laughs> you for free. No, um, uh, that's on film. My biggest message. It's on film. <laughs> My biggest message from tonight from the rally is the fact that the Republicans, we can't stay celebrating for too long. This yes. is a marathon, not a sprint. And the Democrats have already said that if they take back the House in the midterm elections, they are moving for impeachment for now Justice Kavanaugh. And there have already been uh, ethics violation and misconduct um, like uh, cases basically filed against him as a judge. Yeah. And so obviously the, there would be no super majority, but the Dems are still running on that platform. And reality, as we know, doesn't sit well with them. So I just think it's important for, for us all not to relax for too long. And yeah, just stay the Dems. Are, you know what the Dems are like right now? They're like an a, a, an ex that you dumped and still hanging out in front of your house. <laughs> that's what they Walker. are with this. They are, that's how they are with Kavanaugh. They can't. They yeah. can't drive away. They got to. They're just staring yeah. at into your window. Sometimes it's hard to let go. <laughs> I know, Kat, but you gotta let go. But you it's, have to let. But go. it's also worth driving with our prettier, taller girlfriend in front of their house too. <laughs> oh, sorry, I keep turning this way. I don't know how this is happening. <laughs> This is so crazy. <laughs> we're having a baby. Like, you know, like, we're, we're doing a lot of that, too. Yeah, it's true. No one is a saint in this game. Still to come, another week, another Trump tr triumph, the greatest monologue of all time. Next. Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Marianne Rafferty. Judge Brett Kavanaugh is now an associate justice on the nation's highest court. He was sworn in by Chief Justice John Roberts and former Justice Anthony Kennedy shortly after he was confirmed.
shortly after he was confirmed by the Senate in a 50 to 48 vote. That's the smallest confirmation margin in nearly 140 years and follows weeks of bitter partisan debate, accusations of sexual misconduct and protests. Kavanaugh has vehemently denied any wrongdoing. It's a major victory for President Trump. He has now appointed two justices to the, to the Supreme Court in less than two years. The president telling a crowd in Topeka, Kansas, that this is a historic night and a tremendous victory for the American people. Democrats and Republicans are planning to use the confirmation as a way to rally their bases. I'm Marianne Rafferty. Now back to the Greg Gutfeld Show. To the Greg Gutfeld Show. If there's anything Trump loves more than trade, I haven't seen it. So why are people falling asleep with trade? People are falling asleep with trade. I think it's, to, to me, it's the most exciting thing you can talk about. Look at him. That's so happy. He loves this stuff so much. Don't even think of changing the subject. In a tweet this weekend, Mr. President, you said that it's incorrect to say you're limiting the scope of the FBI investigation. What does that have to do with trade? Um, I do have a second question on the Kavanaugh thing, when you get back to it, if you take that. Let's go. But you'll take that now? No, no. Okay. Do you have a question on trade? You answered several questions Do you have a question on trade? It's like you're trying to take the model train he just got for Christmas away from him. <laughs> Trade, that is his model train, and he wants to keep playing with it. And this new deal is another trend which the press hates, which is kind of weird. They should be happy. After all, they elected him. Right, Ted? Donald Trump has been very, very good for baseball. <laughs> he has been wonderful. That means that, what? That, that if ratings means, are up, that means what? That, oh, the ratings are up. It means you can't do without Donald Trump. You would be lost without Donald Trump. Well, that is what he says. Ted, you know that's not true. CNN's ratings would be in the toilet without Donald Trump. <laughs> you know that's not true. You're, you're, you're playing for laughs. Ah, poor. Ted just served a plate of truth to CNN's jab of the hut. <laughs> Ted called our toilet wash over him like tepid hot dog water. <laughs> Stelter looked embarrassed. Just like me when my mom found that secret compartment under my bed. I was embarrassed too. They had a hell of a time uh, identifying the mailman. <laughs> Fact is, the more Trump talks, the angrier his critics get. Too bad he's not a drinker. I'm not a drinker. I can honestly say I never had a beer in my life, okay? Right. It's one of my only good traits. I don't drink. <laughs> Whenever they're looking for something good, I say, I've never had a glass of alcohol. I've never had alcohol. I've just, you know, for whatever reason. Imagine if I had, what a mess I'd be. Would I be the, I'd be the world's worst. <laughs> that would any world leader say anything like that? <laughs> only, only him. And it drives his critics nuts. Like Alyssa Milano. Who's the boss now? Trump. He is completely and totally belittling the intelligence of the American people. But he's not um, doing it by accident, and neither right. is Lindsey Graham. They're speaking to a, a huge portion of the population who agree with them. What do you think about that? Do they agree with him, or is he using some sort of, like, cult-like force to, to try to make them see that? I mean, I'm not sure if you were... <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. You gotta watch that last part again. Cult-like force to, to try to make them see that. I mean, I'm not sure if you, I mean, I'm not sure if you, I mean, I'm not sure if you. Oh my God. Even the hosts at MSNBC think Alyssa Milano has lost her frickin' marbles. <laughs> but, you know, even uh, CNN admits Trump's doing great. Check out this headline. I think it's today. It's uh, President Donald Trump's week. You knew it hurt to write that. But they got to admit it's fair. And for Trump, it's all about fairness. Hence his love for trade. Too bad it's so boring. <laughs> Maybe we can fix that. 
ready to see NAFTA get blown off the planet by some North American badasses? Are you a fan of imports, exports, supply chain augmentation, and the hottest consumer protections this side of the prime meridian? Then you'll love Tariff Tussles XXL Volume 6. It's the ultimate mixtape of all the trade negotiations that couldn't be shown on TV. This tape is so extreme, it's banned in 192 countries and the island nation of Hawaii. All your favorite bilateral discussion topics are here, like anti-diversion clauses, certificates of conformity, rare to any state, destination control statements, a man juggling live piranhas, multilateral development banks, and blindfolded axe throwing giraffes. This isn't your granddad's trade renegotiation tape. The only thing getting busted on this tape is America's export quotas. Order now and we'll throw in the best of Parliament's Gone Wild. It's Tariff Tussles XXL Volume 6. Rated M for MAGA. Cyrus, what, what I find interesting about Donald Trump is I feel like I've been going to night school and I keep learning about government and things like trade that I never like I didn't I didn't know anything about tariffs or trade. I knew that I was against tariffs and I was against. But then I, I he puts he forces you to have to learn about this stuff. So in a weird way, he's putting you th through some civics class. He is the most transparent president in the history of our country, like yeah. literally. Yeah. Not always a, living in a glass house. Yeah, living in a glass house is that is the White House is not always a great thing. Sometimes yeah. we see things we probably shouldn't, or hear things that we wish we hadn't. But you do learn kind of as he learns. But you do learn kind of as he learns, which yeah. is which is kind of cool. But I, at the same time, like go back to that CNN thing. Yeah, it hurts him so much. To, <laughs> what that was Ted Koppel, right? Yeah, who yeah. murdered him like that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Told it like it was. Yeah. No, it's not. It's like telling a stalker who has pictures of girl, this actress all over his house, she's never going to date you, bro. She's never going to. No, no, she's not. No, she's, I'm not that into her. Like, you are. She's not into you. Like, they, CNN will not admit that they cannot go. I would, I would bet 100 bucks they can't go 10 minutes without mentioning Donald Trump's name at least seven times. Yeah. They just, yeah. It doesn't matter what the show is. It's going to be like Life of the Polar Bear in the Antarctic since Trump got it off. <laughs> you know, they can't stay away from it. It is, it, it is a, uh, a profitable obsession that they keep denying, Cat. Do you love anything in your life, Cat, as much as Trump loves trade? I mean, wouldn't you want to have, like, he's, he loves it, and he doesn't care that we don't get it. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, cat. I do have a cat, guys. Wow, we get it. Do I have a cat? You know, having a pet is not a punchline. It's a very rewarding life experience. It is. It's a punchline. It's a very rewarding life experience. It is. To care for a little creature. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Greg? Well, I am a little creature, and okay. I take care of myself. See? No, I no. don't love anything as much as Trump loves trade. Yes. I don't. And he really does love it, but it, unfortunately, it is very boring to talk about. And yeah. I also, I don't, I'm not a fan of the tariffs. I think tariffs right. are a tax on the American consumer. So this mm -hmm. is one area where Trump and I do not agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree with everything that's been said in terms of CNN needing Trump. I mean, the entire country is having the same conversation, but in opposite ways. Right. It's like some people are like Trump, and other people are like uh, Trump, and other people are like uh, Trump. <laughs> but everyone's talking about the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Trump. Yeah, Trump. Ugh. You know, <laughs> that was a cute noise that just came out of me. Yeah, I thought it was, it was a, like a little burp, a baby burp. Uh, Am, uh, uh, Emily, uh, um, it's, he's like, I think the reason why he likes um, trade is that he's a kind of stickler on fairness. Like if he senses that there's some kind, something wrong because uh, he's a deal maker and that he might get screwed, that pisses him off. And so he looks at these countries as people trying to screw us over. And that's wrong. Cutting in line. Yes, and you know, part of his platform running, part of his campaigning was that he was a great negotiator and that he would negotiate on our behalf to get us out from these deals that up until now, as you said, we didn't know anything about. Yeah. Up until now, no one probably knew anything about it whatsoever. And then he's through his transparency and through his global civics lesson, we yeah. are learning along with him, as you said. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's such a disservice too, to all of us. I always rant and rave about the oversimplification of, of things and subjects and that we're all kind of missing the data points because everyone's saying Trump, uh. Mm -hmm. And that day on the White House lawn, when the new agreement was signed mm -hmm. and the press who for so long have said 
said that the biggest crisis of the century was us renegotiating then NAFTA. Mm -hmm. Totally ignored it for Kavanaugh. And I saw the foreign yeah. journalists were frustrated, like, give back the mic. And I just <laughs> felt like it was so egotistical for yeah. the press to ignore and think it's all about our core, ignore what used to be the shiny object in front of them, mm -hmm. to the detriment of everyone else who had participated the whole time. So. Good point. That's yeah. why the, the real lesson, I mean, see, it's like a civics lesson w watching yeah. Trump, but it's really a lesson in the media because there was no way the media was going to pay attention to this trade thing. Yeah. And the NAFTA thing is a huge victory for him. So he went into the news conference and he was rude back <laughs> to the press. Yeah. And so the press played this up. I saw it all week. The press yeah. said, look at this rude thing the president did. He yelled at the press. He made them talk about trade. CNN played his trade <laughs> talk, which they never would have done. That's so he true. played it. He played them at their own game once again. All right. Well, they cried, they screamed, they chanted, and maybe they helped Kavanaugh win. We discuss the protesters next. <laughs> like horse flies on a porta potty. <laughs> protesters descended on Washington. A few arrests, but mostly peaceful. Although the ones in the Senate gallery were a delight during the vote. Delight during the vote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> arms will restore order in the gallery. Mr. Manchin. Shame! Clerk will suspend. The sergeant at arms will restore order in the gallery. The sergeant at arms will restore order in the gallery. The sergeant at arms will restore order in the gallery. Well, I think the sergeant at arms was at a bar. Uh, it sounded like wounded in a forest. Look, I get it. Protesting is as American as throwing up after eating a box of crayons. But so is free thought, which is why I found this kind of protest a little weird. On cloture. Voting on cloture. In 30 minutes. In 30 minutes. Meet me to the left. Meet me to the left. If you would like to go to an office. If you would like to go to an office. To spend time. To spend time. With your senator. With your senator. <laughs> Okay, who doesn't think that's creepy as hell? <laughs> and now it's like really common for them to do, th do this. Here's some more. Summon to vote. Yeah, summon to vote. Let's go watch the vote. Let's go watch the vote. Here's some more. Summon to vote. Yeah, summon to vote. Let's go watch the vote. Let's go watch the vote. In offices that you wish to communicate with. In offices that you wish to communicate with. I'm going to go to Heidi Heitkamp's office. I'm going to go to Heidi Heitkamp's office. Why? She's on our side. <laughs> She's on her side, and then he just ignores her. <laughs> Typical misogynist telling women what to think. Right, Mr. Mittens? <laughs> All right, Kat. Obviously, I go to you. Um, I thought that was really weird to see a male giving orders to women in that specific instance. Yes. All right, Kat. Obviously, I go to you. Um, I thought that was really weird to see a male giving orders to women in that specific instance. Obviously, I go to you. Um, I thought that was really weird to see a male giving orders to women in that specific instance. Yes. Yeah. All right, Kat. Obviously, I go to you. Um, I thought that was really weird to see a male giving orders to women in that specific instance. Yeah. Or in the 
this country as well as to be obnoxious to the power in this country. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a wonderful thing. You know, though, the one thing that worries me, Tom, is that the theory of the mob is that they are not individual voices. Like, there's not a bunch of people with in individual ideas, but a collection of mimics. So it kind of spreads. It's like a viral thing, and everybody gets together. And as you can see, they will say and repeat the same thing. Every mob only has one voice. And they suspend, ju every individual then suspends judgment. That's what scares me. And yet, Alyssa Milano, she said that Trump was the one who had his his yes his fans under a, a mob like trance, uh, but it's it's not dissimilar to the way individual then suspends judgment. That's what scares me. And yet, Alyssa Milano, she said that Trump was the one who had his his yes his fans under a, a mob like trance. Uh, but it's it's not dissimilar to the way you prep us for the show. You will laugh at all my jokes. <laughs> we will laugh at all your jokes. You will you will not make Tyrus mad. We will not make Tyrus mad. What are you laughing at? <laughs> oh, because you're some kind of lawyer. Uh, what did you make of that whole thing? Kind of creepy? Um, yeah, when I saw the headline and I clicked on it first, I expected it to be like my sorority issue. When I saw the video, I was like, oh my God, this is like a skulls and crossbones, horrible, scary movie. And a couple hours ago, one of the protesters on the steps of the Supreme Court she climbed up on yeah. one of those over 200-year-old statues, the huge ones that flank the Supreme Court, and that just, it broke my heart. That statue, it's named the Contemplation of Justice, and I just felt like this was a metaphor in the making as she was climbing on it and posing for her Instagram photo that'll yeah. validate her as an activist, and then clamoring off of it, and off she goes, and I felt like that was what this entire lack of process was, was trampling on the thoughtful contemplation of justice, because there was none. And there is one with the I think Pence, Pence, Pence stole the show with his monotone. He just kept saying it. <laughs> what, he, what he should have done is he was like, we'd like to give the protest the floor. <laughs> what, he, what he should have done is he was like, we'd like to give the protest the floor for 37 minutes. <laughs> like, they would have fell apart. Yeah. Like, yeah. Take the mic. Go ahead. Let's hear it. 37 minutes. Go. <laughs> After eight seconds, they would have had nothing else to say. Yeah, it's like, true. Sometimes you call them out on it. But here's the thing. The protesting is a, a protester is an overused term now. Yeah. It's like history in the making. It's literally every day we hear it. Mm -hmm. If you're protesting and we can hear individual protests, it's not a very good protest. <laughs> That's true. If you had 15 million people outside the White House protest, it's not a very good protest. That's yeah, true. If you had 15 million people outside the White House, I'd be like, we need to pay attention to this. Right. But when it's scattered. And screeching. And screeching, <laughs> it's individuals who are upset. I get upset when I got on set that the Red Sox were down three. I'm yeah. protesting that. But no one wants to join me. Yes. This is a protest. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's not, it's not. It's yeah. not indicative of the United States. It's indicative of this small group of people. Exactly. And you know, I, I got to roll, but it just reminded me of a horror movie where uh, you're seeing like this haunted house and you hear these invisible screams. <laughs> it's like there's invisible flying monsters that nobody can see. It was creeped the hell out of me when I was watching. And you know, I, I got to roll, but it just reminded me of a horror movie where uh, you're seeing like this haunted house and you hear these invisible screams. <laughs> it's like there's invisible flying monsters that nobody can see. It was creeped the hell out of me when I was watching it. All right, still to come. It's that time of year again when celebrities make those videos telling you to vote, and then the person they want to lose wins. Like horse flies on a porta potty. <laughs> Protesters descended on Washington. A few arrests, but mostly peaceful. Although the ones in the Senate gallery were a delight during the vote. Delight during the vote. Senator Arms will restore order in the gallery. Mr. Manchin. Shame! Clerk will suspend. The Sergeant at Arms will restore order in the gallery. The Sergeant at Arms will restore order in the gallery. The Sergeant at Arms. We'll restore order in the gallery. Well, I think the sergeant at arms was at a bar. <laughs> uh, it sounded like wounded in a forest. Look, I get it. Protesting is as American as throwing up after eating a box of crayons. But so is free thought, which is why I found this kind of protest a little weird. On closure. In 30 
minutes. In 30 minutes. Meet me to the left. Meet me to the left. If you would like to go to an office. If you would like to go to an office. To spend time. To spend time. With your senator. With your senator. <laughs> Okay, who doesn't think that's creepy as hell? <laughs> and now it's like really common for them to do, th do this. Here's some more. Summon to vote. Yeah, summon to vote. Let's go watch the vote. Let's go watch the vote. Here's some more. Summon to vote. Yeah, summon to vote. Let's go watch the vote. Let's go watch the vote. In offices that you wish to communicate with. In offices that you wish to communicate with. I'm going to go to Heidi Heitkamp's office. I'm going to go to Heidi Heitkamp's office. Why? She's on our side. <laughs> Why? She's on her side. And then he just ignores her. Typical misogynist telling women what to think. Right, Mr. Mittens? All right, Kat. <laughs> Obviously, I go to you. Um, I thought that was really weird to see a male giving orders to women in that specific instance.